Hi, I'm Chloe and this is my first video blog, so bear with me. Um, just going to talk a little bit about my AU experience so far and, well, we'll take it from there. <laughs> Um, readers of my blog will know that I went to a traditional university. Uh, so, after my levels I took a gap year, uh, but I only lasted a term, rather pathetic, I know. Um, I was loving being back at school after having that time out for my gap year. Uh, I had actually really missed it, even though lots of my friends think that's very sad. Um, but it was the social side of it that wasn't for me. Um, on a course, I was studying law, and on a course that requires that much work, it's very difficult when you've got um, parties going on till the early hours of the morning and so on. Um, so I came home and I got a standard finance job, that's kind of the done thing here in Guernsey, which is where I live, um, and I just felt like that was going to be it because I didn't have a degree, so I was never going to be able to do anything other than working in finance. Um, so I considered trying again with a different uh, traditional university but by that time I was already working so I didn't want to lose that income and independence that I'd, I'd had there. So that's when I attended the Open University. I didn't really know much about it. I spent ages faffing around and researching. Um, but in the end, finally, bit the bullet, and here I am. Just started my first ever Open University course, and I love it. Um, I'm hoping to do a career, uh, a degree in English Literature, uh, which is a little bit different from Law. It is actually what I was originally planning to do when I went to a traditional university, but I had a last minute panic that it wasn't vocational enough. Um, but actually, in hindsight, that's not that important. I just want the qualification. Um, so I've started AA 100, which is the arts, past and present, which is kind of an introduction for all humanities courses. Um, but like I said, hoping to do English literature, maybe a bit of a leaning towards creative writing. I'm hoping to do the whole thing in three or four years, kind of a standard degree time. Uh, I've started just with one because I decided a little bit last minute that I was going to just do it, um, so I only had enough money to sign up for one course. Um, but I'm finding it okay kind of time-wise, so I'm thinking after this one I'm going to move on to two. And while I mention money, I have to say that is a big issue for me because uh, as I said, I'm based in the Channel Islands, and so the fees are a bit different than they are for mainland students. Um, so I think for mainland it's about £600 for a 60 credit module, whereas for us it's 1400 so over double is a little bit steep. Um, right, so how am I finding the course? I haven't been to any face-to-face -face tutorials, um, so all of my studying has been by myself or via the online channels, um, which actually I really like. I think the online, um, all the web pages are really well laid out. They've got all the information that you need. And I'm really actually really impressed. Um, our tutor group is uh, using the Illuminate tutorials as well but I've unfortunately missed the only one that we've had so far but I think that that kind of is the perfect mix of being able to actually chat in real time but do so from the comfort of your own home because you know traveling somewhere is only added time to time that you could be studying a lot of people find it difficult to fit study in as it is um, for me a lot of my communication happens online anyway because my friends are at traditional universities. Um, so Facebook, Twitter, you know, catching up with them over email, that's the kind of thing that I'm used to every day anyway. So I think even if I could make it to face-to-face -face tutorials quite easily, maybe I wouldn't. Um, 
I work full time at the moment and even though I said I thought I was going to be stuck in finance forever, now I've just made the leap to PR, which I'm thrilled about. Um, it's really what I've always wanted to do and I thought I'd never be able to do it without a degree, so being able to do it at the same time as my degree is a bit of a bonus. Um, it's a bit longer uh, hours than my old job, so slightly more than the 9 to 5, um, and I was already a bit worried about fitting everything in, so it's gone fine so far, and actually it's a lot closer to my house, so um, I leave home later in the mornings and I get home earlier, and I can even actually nip home for lunch, which is perfect for fitting in chores, actually. Um, if I do my chores when I'm home on lunch, then that frees up so much time in the evening. Um, that I'm able to fit in even more studying, which is great. So far uh, in my studying, I haven't spent anywhere near 16 hours a week on it, uh, which is what the OU would recommend, um, except the assignment week, which I did spend a lot of time on, because I'm a bit of a perfectionist, and obviously I didn't get perfect mark, but I'm very happy with the mark that I got, so I think probably that was worth it. Um, but the amount of time that I am spending is making me feel quite confident about maybe taking two modules next time. Um, so hopefully I'll be able to fit that in, though I'm a little uneasy not knowing how big a difference there'll be between a level one course and a level two course. I, I don't really know um, exactly what the difference will be. Um, I think the other thing that's helping me fitting everything in is that I'm not long out of school. Um, I'm quite used to coming home, getting straight on with homework, having to fit everything in. Um, and, you know, I've got no major responsibilities. Um, I know a lot of other people on the course have got kids and, you know, they're working far more hours, they're self-employed, stuff like that. But I've got nothing like that to distract me and so I can handle quite a lot more work. Um, but yeah, definitely being fresh out of school is helping a lot because I haven't got into the habit of just coming home and vegging, not that often anyway. Um, I don't feel like I'm missing out on being at a traditional university. Maybe that's because I did go and have a go at traditional university. I don't know if that would be the same for uh, young people in, in this situation. Um, but, you know, I didn't like it, so <laughs> I don't feel like I'm missing out. And my little sister, she's only a year younger than me, she is at the same university that I was at, uh, also studying law, um, and she didn't take a gap year, so actually while I was there we were in the same year. Um, but she's still there, she's loving it, and, you know, I get to pop over there and stay in their student house, yuck, um, every now and then, but, you know, if anything, that only uh, reinforces for me that that's not how I would like to live. I'm, I'm happy that I'm here and I'm earning my get to, you know, have a nice house and <laughs> and be clean and tidy and, and things like that. So this is definitely, definitely uh, the best option for me, I think. Um, I think that the OU could do things to make things better for young students. Um, first, the start dates for the courses. Uh, as I mentioned, I'm hoping to do another two when I finish. Uh, I think this course finishes in um, August, September time, and so those will be October start dates. But of course, once those October courses finish and I want to move on to my next courses, um, I'll have to wait because there's a summer holidays. Um, I think the main draw for people is that the Open University is flexible and you're supposed to be able to do it when you want. Um, but there isn't that start date straight away when you finish and I think for someone like me, I work full time why should I not be able to study full time as well um, I'm in a bit of a hurry I suppose because I feel like not having a degree is holding me back in comparison to people my age and I don't want to have to wait to be able to finish my qualification obviously I'm enjoying studying and I'd be happy to take my time over it, but if there's a way that I could start each course when one ends, maybe have, you know, four start dates throughout the year instead of two, um, that would be ideal for me, I think. 
Um, I've mentioned money already, um, but I, I really would. I'd love to know why it's so expensive. Uh, £1,405, don't forget the five. Um, so when I'm doing two next, next start date, um, that's going to be almost £3,000 in a year, which is a lot for a single year, I think. Um, especially when I live so far away that I cannot get to the face-to-face -face tutorials. Um, so that's completely impractical and um, so I'm missing out on that aspect. So all I've really got is the books that have been sent to me and the online resources, which as I've said, they are very good, but I'm not sure if they're £1,400 worth of good. So I would like to know you know what that's all about kind of thing um and on the subject of the online materials um i don't i would just love more of that like i've said people my age that's what we used to we get all of our information online whether it's for our qualifications or not so adding even more online materials and interactivity um would, would really be good because that really fits in with the way that we live and we learn so that is my only suggestions because at the moment there's a few online tutorials but there are far more face-to-face -face ones and um, there are discussion forums but they're pretty quiet to be honest and there's not much discussion going on there I'd like to see more being done to improve that really